Hi everybody, it's Corey, and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. Really excited about today's video because I'm participating in Heidi Sambles Coastal Summer DIY Challenge. There will be a link to the playlist in the description box below, as well as a link to Heidi's channel. If you haven't already checked her out, I really encourage you to do so. She is phenomenal. She posts so many fantastic videos and she's super supportive of the crafting community. So anything I can do to help her, I am all in. So today I have five summer coastal DIYs for you. So I'm really excited to share them with you. But before we get started, please make sure that you've subscribed if you haven't already and hit the little notification bell so you make sure that you get notified every time I upload a new video. And last but not least, please like my video with a big thumbs up so that I can continue to grow my channel. Thanks so much. Let's get started. Here we go with DIY number one. So this is from Birch Lane. I found it online and thought it was super cute. We are going to be recreating it with some scrap wood that I had out in the garage from a pallet. <laughs> you know, I love my pallets. A hammer, nails, um, a couple of different colors of chalk paint, and I have some navy vinyl there, but I did find some black, so I'll actually be using black. Um, so I've got the chalk paints from Waverly and Crystal and Agave, and and then a Rust-Oleum chalk plate and charcoal that we're going to be using for a stain. And we'll show you how that happens in a little bit. But um, first, we are going to be putting our boards together. I'm going to be nailing these together with some other little pieces of scrap wood. I'm using the one-inch nails. And you'll notice that my boards are not all the same length. And that's okay because once I have everything put together, I'm going to be taking it out to the garage and using my circular saw to trim it all up. That's all that's available to me right now because my table saw is in the shop and my fiance um, had borrowed the miter saw back at his place. So <laughs> I am marking these off at 18 inches between the two lines. I'm going to take it out and trim that. So there they all, all trimmed up and it's looking good. So next step, we are going to create the stain that I mentioned and just adding some water to this charcoal Rust-Oleum chalk paint, getting it to the right consistency, and then I'm gonna be coating the board. So after I have a good coat on here, I'm going to go back through with a rag. As you can see, you can see the wood grain coming through. I just love that. And my goal here is just to help make the wood look aged and weathered as it, uh, blah, I can't talk, as if it's been out in the sun and the rain and the salty air. Okay. And you'll want to make sure you get all the edges and you don't have to do the back of it, but I want to do the back of it just in case anybody happens to flip it over. It looks like it's all cohesive. So there we go. So it's all nice and dry and we can start working with it. And I'm going to start by taping it off in the different sections. If you remember from the picture from Birch Lane, um, there were blocks of color on it. So I'm going to tape this off so that I can at least have clean lines within my blocks. That being said, you don't need to go crazy with the paint on this because we do want some of that uh, wood color, that aged wood to come through so the sign looks like it's weathered. So starting with the chalk paint in Nantucket blue, I absolutely love this color. There are three sections that we're going to be doing in this shade, but um, the third section will have to wait for a little bit. Using my heat gun in between just to help dry the paint because I like to work a little faster than the paint allows me to if I let it dry normally. So you'll see my heat gun here and there as I try to speed up the project a little bit. So now coming in with the Agave Waverly Chalk Paint. This is also a really pretty color. And you can see how I'm leaving some of the wood tone. I actually wish I had left more of it than I had. That one little section is 
almost perfect right there. But in other places on the board, I feel like I even use too much paint. So don't be afraid to leave some of the wood grain showing for this type of an effect. Some more of the agave, that's the third block for that color. Now I'm coming in with the crystal. This is also a Waverly chalk paint in crystal, and it looks white on the camera, but it's actually a really pale, uh, crisp blue tone. And I decided to go with that instead of the white because I felt like the white might be a little bit too stark. So I thought that this was gonna be a good option. And me with my fat paint brushes <laughs> it's like too big for the container but it did the job so here's where i'll go back in after i get this dried up a little bit and do that last block with the nantucket i was so excited to do that last color that i forgot to uh tape it off but I realized momentarily and uh, I'm like oh yeah I better tape that off too <laughs> so I don't uh, mess up my paint job already so there we go and I did actually end up going back in with some white chalk paint because I decided that these colors really were a little bit too dark so you can see me dry brushing i took a little bit of paint on my brush wiped off most of it onto my um, covered surface there and then went back through with with white chalk paint just to distress it a little bit and and brighten it up a little bit i felt like these colors were a little deep for the black uh, vinyl that i'm going to be using on it later I decided to try to sand it a little bit with my Dollar Tree sanding block, but it wasn't really giving me the effect that I wanted. So I kind of just left well enough alone at that point. And here we are cutting our vinyl with the Silhouette Cameo. So figured I would show you this at work a little bit because I don't know, it just makes me happy. I think it's such a neat machine. I have no idea how they programmed it to do that, but I just think it's really cool. And there is our relax. You'll notice that I did that in two parts because um, my uh, mat for my Silhouette Cameo is only a 12 inch mat. You can get a 24 inch mat. I have not invested in one yet. Um, so I just pieced it together. And then you'll notice that I do have tails on this. Um, my font did not come with tails like that, but I found an awesome video on YouTube showing you how to actually add tails to any font that you want. And I'll make sure that I put a link to that in the description box below. So you can check that out if you have interest. Now you don't have to use a vinyl cutter. If you have a silhouette or a Cricut, that's great. But if you don't, you can use a stencil for this. You could hand letter it, whatever works for you. You could use a printable and transfer it. There are a lot of different options here. But Wendy from White Sparrow Living had mentioned at one point that uh, if you use your heat gun over the vinyl, it helps to kind of help it suction to the wood. So that's what I was doing there. And there you have it. What do you think? Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. Let me know in the comments box if you like it. Give me a big thumbs up if you think that's good. DIY number two, here we go. So this is an inspiration photo. I didn't have the starfish, but I'm gonna use shells. So for this, we're gonna use a couple of eight by 10 canvases from the Dollar Tree, as well as an eight by 10 piece of glass from one of their frames. We're gonna be using E6000 hot glue, some shells, some nautical rope, 
We're also going to be using the Nantucket Blue Chalk Paint by Plaid, as well as some more of that stain that I made before for the Relax sign so that we can stain our wood frames here. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove the canvases from the frames. And I wanna apologize in advance because I lost some of the most important footage for this project. So fortunately, I'm gonna show you right here what I plan to do later, which is to sandwich the glass between those two frames. So you can see how I do that. So we're gonna be using the canvas. I'm showing you the two different sides there because obviously there's a front and a back. I actually like the back side of the canvas for this project because it has kind of a sandy tone to it as opposed to like a, a solid white. So I'm gonna use that as my backdrop for my shells. I'm cutting it down here, going to reapply it to the frame in a little bit after we get it um, stained the way that we want it. Just trimming it down so that it doesn't overlap anywhere. So going to go ahead and stain the pieces now. And once they are all stained and nice, I'll reattach the canvas and then I will hot glue the shells as well as the inner frame or fake mat, if you will, that I create out of foam core and then paint with that Nantucket blue. Again, I lost all that footage, so I'm just trying to give you a heads up on what's coming because there will be a what here it is. I was able to capture a one second clip of part of this. So here it is next. Okay, so that's right after I put the glass on and right before I sandwiched the rest of it. That was all I was able to recover from my corrupted video. So I'm sorry. But um, one thing I would mention, when you select your shells for this, make sure that they do not sit higher than the thickness of that frame, because otherwise when you go to try and put your glass on, it's not gonna work. Um, you gotta make sure that the glass isn't gonna hit those shells when you go to sandwich it together. So just something to be aware of. Because the shells I picked out first, I realized they weren't gonna work, so I had to go with these, but I actually am really happy with them. They turned out really well. And then I'm just using nautical rope to seal up that seam where everything came together in the middle. So there you go. Isn't it cute? I actually am really happy with the way this turned out. So DIY number three, here we go. This one is super easy. We're gonna use a vase from the Dollar Tree. We're using white chalk paint from Waverly, Nantucket blue chalk paint from um, Home Decor Plaid, um, and a couple of paint brushes. Right now I am using my hot, um, my heat gun, excuse me, to go ahead and get that label off. Some of them come off so easily and others just do not. So, <clears throat> taking that off and then I'm using a wet wipe. I was really amazed at how well this took all the residue off. So recommend wet wipes <laughs> if you need to take off that residue. And then I'm just gonna pour some of that white chalk paint right on there and slather it on. <clears throat> I end up giving this two coats of paint um, and also wanna make sure that I use the paintbrush in the same direction. Sorry, some of this is out of frame, but you'll see I'm used, trying to use the paintbrush going in the same direction here to just make sure all the brush strokes look uniform. So there you can see, I'm just kind of slowing down a little bit. This is like four times the speed, you guys. So um, I actually am going pretty slow doing that right there. Once that's dry with its two coats, I'm going to tape off a stripe area with my painter's tape. And then I'm gonna be coming back in with the Nantucket blue chalk paint again and just painting that stripe on my vase. So again, this is such a simple and quick project. So if you're just looking for something really striking that's easy and quick, relatively speaking, I mean, the longest part of this is waiting for the paint to dry really. This is a great project. All right, and the reveal. It's not sharp. I love the blue against the white. I think that's so pretty. So now I'm just going to use some hydrangeas, also from the Dollar Tree. I've got 10 stems there, five white and five blue. I'm just going to set them up in my little vase and that's that.
What do you think? Give me a comment and give me a big thumbs up and let me know. So just want to take a quick minute to remind you about Heidi Sambel. She is hosting this challenge and she is just phenomenal. You can see all the wonderful videos she has posted on her channel. So be sure to go and check her out if you haven't already. DIY number four. So for this, we're going to use two more of the vases from the dollar store. Waverly chalk paint in agave, some shells, some nautical rope, E6000, hot glue, painter's tape, some gloves, a paintbrush, and armor etch. Armor etch is going to help make our glass look frosted. It's not going to help it. It's actually going to frost the glass. So just a side note here that the container states that it should not be used by anyone under the age of 18. So just a reminder that this is not a project for little kids. And if you have little ones, you might want to make sure that you're not using this in a place where they can reach up and grab. Um, my impression is that Armor Etch is some sort of an acid. It literally eats away at the glass somehow and etches it permanently. So you can actually put this in the dishwasher. Not that we would put candle holders in the dishwasher, but if you wanted to use it on glassware, you certainly could, and it is dishwasher safe. It is permanent. So I went ahead and taped off a section because I was planning on just um, etching the top half of the vases. And then, of course, I totally spaced and I painted the bottom half, <laughs> which I realized about halfway through. So that's all right. I just went ahead and went back and etched the rest of it. So you may notice that I've been using a lot of these vases in my projects. It's because I've got about 30 plus of them in my basement right now, so I'm slowly working through them. My fiance and I had planned to get married this October, but with things crazy the way they are, with you know everything that's happening in the world right now, we've decided to just postpone it, which is fine. Um, but I had started gathering all kinds of things and um, had started looking into projects it's actually what got me started on my youtube journey i started looking for ideas and i came across some videos on youtube and i was hooked i started binge watching youtube videos and i've been a crafter actually all my life since the time I can remember, I've always loved crafting. And uh, I can remember back in high school, my mom suggesting that I should teach crafting classes, but I never really had an outlet for it. So anyway, here is the project all frosted. Now I'm gonna come back in with some of the Waverly chalk paint in agave, and I'm just gonna paint a rough stripe on each of the um, vases or what we will have as candlestick holders or candle pillar holders um, and i'm not really being all that careful with it it is just um kind of messy if you will as far as coverage goes because i just wanted it to um, be a little more rustic looking so now using e6000 a little hot glue to get it started but then using e6000 all over the bottom part of the vase and we're going to be wrapping this with nautical rope And I really only used the hot glue to get it started, to hold it for that immediate secure hold. And then at the very end, when I needed to make sure that it wasn't gonna come loose until the E6000 dried. There's really no sense in using the hot glue anywhere else. It's really important to use the E6000 or another type of glue that would be a permanent bond that will not be impacted by heat. Because if you're gonna use real candles in here, it'll heat up. If you're just using hot glue, you risk melting the hot glue and having the whole thing unravel on you. So I was really focused on the E6000 again with just using the hot glue beginning and end. So there that is all wrapped up. So now we're just going to add a little shell to give it a little bit more interest, make it pretty. I'm just gonna hot glue that on. There should be enough of an insulator between the uh, the glass and the shell with all of that nautical rope that we shouldn't worry about that coming off, I shouldn't think. And there we go. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. So there we are with the second one. 
And now I've decided I want to give it a little bit of a riser. So I'm using some Jenga tumbling blocks from Dollar Tree. I know I didn't mention those in the beginning. Sorry about that. It was a last minute ad that I decided to, uh, to do once I had the project finished. So just adding those with some E6000. Again, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of frame here, but hopefully you can get the gist of what I'm doing. And that just lifted it up a little bit. And then I did the same thing to the second one. Wiping off the glue so I don't bond it to my table surface. And there you have it. So DIY number five. All right, this also was on Birch Lane. This is my inspiration for the next project. For this, we are gonna be using eight toilet brush wand cleaner scrubber thingies um, a wreath form we're going to be using foam core i only had black but you can use white using nautical rope some um, of the twine the jute twine cord um, waverly chalk paint and agave again hot glue and a shell so first we're going to take our wreath form and we are going to trace the outline of it on the foam core and then we are going to cut that out and we're going to do that twice so we're going to end up essentially with two kind of funny looking donut shapes really skinny donuts with the foam core so i started to try and use my scissors for this i do not recommend it that was kind of a fail so you're going to want to use your um, exacto knife or your um, craft knife i'm actually using one from the dollar tree so cut out the outer edge and then cut out the middle and then you've got your thing and then we've got two of them again we're going to want one for the top and one for the bottom so i'm going to set those aside for now and I'm taking my toilet brushes and going to unscrew them. I just really liked the shape of these. I thought at first to maybe use the Dollar Tree plungers, but they were just too big. So I saw these and I was like, oh my gosh, and I love the shape. So that's what I decided to do. And what's neat about the wreath form is it has eight of those little connectors for the wreath form to hold the three loops together or hoops together so i'm going to leverage those to make sure that i've got all of my um, toilet brush handles evenly spaced so i get those all around and then i'm going to use the chinese food container as my center now i'm going to use my soldering iron tool to actually melt holes into that that i will then be able to screw all of these brush handles into so i'm going to use my little brush at first just to measure out the size of the hole that i need i'm going to mark that off with a pen and then i'll come in and i will melt the holes with my soldering iron this was pretty satisfying you guys i don't know something about the melting plastic it just it was melting like butter it was making me very happy <laughs> So then I just went through and checked each time to make sure that I had the hole the right size. I was just using one of the, the brush handles to make sure that I had it right. So I went ahead and did that all the way around for eight holes. And there you have it. And it was helpful that the Chinese food container had little markings on it too, so I was able to evenly space that out with the holes. This project, just everything seemed to work together. I was really happy. And you can see me screwing in the brush handles. I'm gonna do that all the way around. And you can see I did tuck those brush handles in between the hoops to just provide it with some added support. So can you see it starting to come together? go so the next thing we are going to do is tie down each of our little toilet scrubber handles um, to the wreath form I'm just using jute cord for this if you have um, oh my gosh what are those uh, zip ties 
Yeah, so if you have zip ties, they would be perfect for this. I actually looked for my zip ties. I have no idea where I stashed them. Um, I've got organizing my craft room on my list of things to do, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. So the juke cord worked just fine. Just wanted to make sure that it was all secure. So then I went back in and gave it a little bit of hot glue just to reinforce it, make sure nothing slipped around and reinforced it at the little place where they were all screwed in as well just so that I made sure that everything was going to stay solid. Added a little bit more hot glue and then started putting on my little donut if you will. So these are the foam core boards and then I flipped it over and gave a little bit more glue on this side because I noticed when I was trying to flip it over it wanted to pop off so made sure that that was all secure and then came back in and added on the other ones. So everything is kind of sandwiched together. I'm doing a lot of sandwiching with my projects today, it seems. So ran a bead of glue all along the frame of the wreath form. It's hard to see here, but that is the wire that is on top of all of the brush sticks. So I've got that on nice and solid. <clears throat> And then I'm going to be taking it outside to spray paint it. I thought about using the chalk paint, but then I decided I would use spray paint instead. And I apologize, I missed the video footage or I lost the video footage of me starting with the nautical rope around. So I had started with Dollar Tree nautical rope and ran out and I was not able to get any more. I went to a whole bunch of Dollar Trees and none of them had it in. So I ended up ordering that giant spool i think it's like a hundred feet so it'll last me for a little while of manila rope i keep wanting to call it milan rope but it's manila rope and it's got a similar look it's a little bit darker than the nautical rope but i think it worked out just fine so i am essentially using this to hide the gap between the two pieces of foam core so I went around the circle here and then for the inside, I actually did end up cutting smaller sections of rope to go in between the spokes of our wheel. And then on the flip side, once the spokes were out of the way, I went ahead and was able to just wrap it around and around again. So then what I'm going to do is take some, actually I'm showing you that I do have a couple of gaps in there. So I did go back in and um, reinforce it with some more hot glue and, and get that all secure so it's nice and even. Then I used my lighter to burn off all the little strings and I'm going back in with some white chalk paint just to give it that distressed look, just like the photo. I did end up using a little bit too much white in the middle there that I fixed later on. So there we have it like that. And not only did I fix that white later, but I went in and added some white to the, not Milan, Manila cord. I added in my little seashell in the middle and there we have it.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. I hope that you really enjoyed the project. Please give me a big thumbs up. And until next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks again. Bye.